graphs of derivative function. Okay, graphs of derivative function. But before we start doing that, uh, I want to talk about the increasing and decreasing function again. It's very important to your sec. Okay, you need to really understand what I'm talking about for the next five minutes. So increasing and decreasing function. So what is a strictly, well, there's two things. One is called strictly increasing, and one is called increasing function. So strictly increasing function means when x increase, y must increase as well. Okay, when x increase, y must increase as well. That's strictly increasing function. What is an increasing function? An increasing function means when x increase, y not decrease, but it can remain the same. Okay, for increasing function, it means when x increase, y does not decrease, which means it can increase or can remain the same. So if we look at this graph, if we look at this graph, the whole thing can be an increasing function. The, the whole thing can be an increasing function. When x increase, y does not decrease, including the flat part, okay, the horizontal line. But only this part can be strictly increasing. So when x increase, y actually increase as well. So that part can only be strictly increasing and the whole thing can be an increasing function. Also, like you can imagine what the decreasing function means. Decreasing function means when x increase, y does not uh, increase. Okay, when x increase, y does not increase. So which means it can decrease or it can remain the same. So this part, horizontal part, can be decreasing as well. Okay, it can be decreasing or increasing function. So in other words, a horizontal line, when x increase, it remain the same. When it remains the same, it satisfies the increasing or satisfies the decreasing. So the horizontal line can be both increasing or decreasing. But for VCE, we talk about strictly increasing. Why, we, why I talk about this here? Because students get the uh, misconception. They think when we talk about strictly increasing, it's not include the turning point. Okay, that's what students assume. But I. We don't really test about increasing or decreasing function in VCE, but why I'm talking about here, I want you to distinguish the difference between those two. Increasing means not decrease, but strictly increasing means when x increase, y must increase as well. That's the difference. But when students assume it, they assume, oh, strictly increasing means we don't include the turning point. That's most the students assume, so that's a wrong assumption. So I have talked about the difference between increasing and strictly increasing, but nothing to do with the turning point. Okay, nothing to do with the turning point. The word strictly doesn't mean turning point not included. So that's the first thing I want you to understand. And another thing we talk about is turning point will or stationary point of inflection will be included in the strictly increasing or decreasing function. So for example, we have a graph like this, and then we said that's a, b, and that point c, comma, d. We said is strictly increasing from negative infinity to a inclusive, okay, inclusive a union inclusive c to infinity. Okay, inclusive c to infinity. So strictly doesn't mean turning point. Nothing to do with the turning point. Okay, nothing to do with the turning point. It's just like you must increase in the y value when x increase. That's the only meaning for the strictly. So a and c will be included. And then if we say is a strictly decreasing is from a to c inclusive both end. So the turning point will be included in both strictly increasing or decreasing function. Okay, another thing we have talked about before. Okay, basically it's warning, like talk about this last line here. Um, when you get f dash x for some x, okay, so all right, for some x, if you have f dash x 
greater than zero. It means those x are strictly increasing. When f dash x less than zero, those x means is strictly decreasing. Okay, the differentiation, the derivative, actually tell you something about increasing and decreasing. But it's only when you have greater or less than. When you have f dash x equals to zero, it can be three possibility. It can be strictly, or say strictly increasing, it can be strictly decreasing only, or it can be both. Or it can be both. So means both increasing and decreasing. Why it can be both increasing or decreasing? Look at this turning point here. When f dash a will equals to zero, right? And that point a can be an increasing function and can be a decrease. Can be part of the increasing, can be part of the decreasing. So it can be both. It can belong to both. But when you have this graph, x cubed, well, f dash zero is uh, equals to zero, right? It's the stationary point of inflection. That point is only strictly increasing point. Okay, it's not strictly decreasing point. It's only the strictly increasing point because the whole cubic graph is increasing. Or like, so it's increasing, okay? This, at this point is strictly increasing. But if we have this graph, negative x cubed, well, again, f dash, f dash zero still equals to zero, but it's strictly decreasing function for the, for the whole function, including the point zero. So it's only decreasing. Okay, it's only decreasing. The first one is only increasing, but for the turning point here, it can be increasing or can be decreasing. So, well, when you have f dash x equals to zero, you can't tell unless you see the graph. Okay, unless you see the graph, otherwise you can't tell. So, so for the derivative, for the derivative, we have greater than zero, we have less than zero. You can tell, must be increasing, must be decreasing. But when it equals to zero, you can't really say anything. So if I give you a statement, if I give you a statement, if fx is an increasing, um, okay, for x belongs to, for example, a to b this function is strictly increasing function okay for x belongs to a to b the function is strictly increasing function f dash x must be greater than zero is that a right statement okay for a to b is a strictly increasing function that's what we know can i say the f dash x for all of this x value must be greater than zero is that right what it can also be can be equals to zero as well. So it can be f dash x greater or equals to zero. Okay, it can be greater or equals to zero. So, but it's not always like that. It can be greater or equals to zero. Give an example. For example, exponential function. Okay, for exponential function. Is that an increasing function? It's increasing for r, right? x belongs to r is strictly increasing. What's the derivative? Is that the derivative greater than zero or greater or equals to zero? Only greater, right? You don't have any point like stationary. So is f dash x greater than zero only for this equation? But like say for the turning point case, a infinity to a is increasing, but a can be equals to zero as well. It depends, okay? You can't really tell like overall like say oh it's only increasing or only increasing or must be equals to zero in some case for example exponential you don't have derivative equals to zero but it's still an increasing function so what i want to say here is when you know the information it is an increasing function you can't really decide whether your derivative will include zero or not okay that's the point i want to make here you can't tell whether there will be a stationary point or not unless you draw the graph you see the graph you may be asked in the set about this kind of question. Okay, so what I have talked about, the discussion here. Well, give you a statement. You need to prove whether the statement is wrong or whether it's right. Or give counter examples. Or give examples, satisfy the statement. And give counter examples which statement do not satisfy the statement. 
Okay, so what kind of examples do not set, satisfy the statement? So I have gone through all the theory here. If you know the derivative greater than zero, that's definitely an increasing function. When you know the derivative less than zero, it's definitely the decreasing function. When the derivative equals to zero, you can't really tell. Okay, you can't really tell. This is from the derivative to increasing or decreasing. But if we come back from, if we know that's an increasing function, for those x can be greater or equals to zero. Okay, can be greater or equals to zero. And whether you have the zero or not depends on the graph. Okay, depends on the graph. Depends on different function. That's what I want to talk about here. So that's, we can say a lot about increasing and decreasing function, but you need to understand the equals to zero, the derivative equals to zero have many possibility here okay can have many possibility so that's everything i want to talk about for the this section okay it's everything we talk about this for those section is the increasing and decreasing function you must have a good understanding on that okay you must have a good understanding on that um then the next thing we talk about is the derivative graph okay it's the derivative graph um it's very easy to talk about derivative graph for polynomials. Okay, it's very easy to talk about the derivative graphs for polynomials. Um, for example, we have a cubic graph here. Okay, I want to sketch f dash x on the same set of axes. So for a cube, a polynomial graph, polynomial graph, we derive it. That will be one power less, right? It will be one power less. If you have a cubic, your derivative will become a quadratic. If you have a quadratic, your derivative will become a linear and if you have a linear the derivative will be a constant and if it's a constant what the derivative will be zero so you have a zero okay still a horizontal line but at zero so very easy to do polynomial you because you can predict what the graph looks like that's a cubic graph and you will you're supposed to have a quadratic okay you're supposed to have a quadratic the first thing we'll do is we look at the turning point okay we look at the turning point what's the derivative will be at the turning point zero so the first thing we'll label is at those x we have zero okay we have zero because well that's y and also the f dash x can be the dy dx so we want to sketch that on the same set of axes at the point turning point or stationary point of inflection you have x intercept on the derivative graph because f dash x equals to zero for those x values and then you know already that's a cubic over derivative will be a quadratic well if it's a quadratic it can be a quadratic looks like this uh, other color it can be a quadratic looks like this right or it can be a quadratic looks like this it depends what well, positive or negative do you think we'll have a positive or negative quadratic here positive we can see from two ways okay we can see from two ways first of all is this a positive cubic graph or negative cubic graph then think about the derivative the derivative will be a positive quadratic right so that that's why we'll have a positive Cube quadratic or secondly we can see in between this value okay in between this value we have a decreasing graph you see we have a decreasing graph for those x we have a decrease which is the middle part so that's why the derivative will be less than zero it needs to be below the axis so that's why we should have graph here okay we should have graph here that's below the x-axis so that's why we will have a positive shape as well if you know we we'll have negative graph here, that, that's the only shape we can sketch. Okay, so we can see from two ways. Also, like, what's the dilation for this quadratic? I don't know. Okay, I don't know. So I can just sketch. Uh, the only thing we look at is the x-intercept at the right place and the shape, positive shape or negative shape. That's the only two things we look at. Well, you can give me a um, quadratic looks like this. Okay, similar like similar graph. Well, that's all good. So we don't know the dilation. We can sketch any dilation, but you must have the right x-intercept and you must have the right positive or negative shape. Okay. So well, these are explanations to uh, how to sketch. Well, a cubic become a quadratic, a quadratic become a linear, linear become constant, constant become zero. So that's how we sketch 
those graphs. And one thing you need to know is stationary point of inflection. When you have a point of stationary point of inflection on the original graph, on your derivative graph, there will be an x-intercept, but it will be a turning point. So it touched the x-axis. Okay, so at that x value, it touched the x-axis as a turning point. So it's like this. Okay, it's touch the x-axis. Not cross the x-axis, it's touching the x-axis. So when you have stationary point of inflection, on your derivative graph, there will be a turning point touch the x-axis at that x value. All right, let's have a look at the next page, page 18. Okay, for the first graph, what kind of equation, like equation is that? What kind of, well, I can say it's a linear. Furthermore, what was that? Y equals to what? y equals to a constant, so y equals to 3 is this equation. So what's the derivative looks like? 0. Okay, you, you have well, you have another place to draw it. I will just draw it on the same set of axes because it's hard for me to go up and down. So that's the derivative graph is just a constant, 0. Okay, y equals to 0. Uh, dy dx equals to 0, I'll say. That's the derivative function. Okay, that's the derivative function. So that's the derivative. Okay, what's the derivative for the next one? You have 0 0.01 and negative a half zero. Well, it's a linear, right? You will have a constant gradient, which is the m, mx plus c. How do we find the gradient m? What is it? You can tell me the answer. 2, right? 0, uh, 1 minus 0 over 0 minus negative a half. That gives you 2. That's the gradient of this linear. So you have 1, 2. That's dy dx equals to 2. Okay, that's the derivative. A linear will derive to a constant. A constant derivative is 0. Okay, it's a quadratic. So for this quadratic, what the derivative should look like? Straight line, right? Linear. So we need to look at the x-intercept first. The turning point is here. So the x-intercept must be at x equals to 2. Should we have a positive linear or negative linear? Positive. Okay, positive. Good. It's a positive quadratic. When you derive it, it's still a positive linear. It's not going to be a negative linear. So you think about 2x squared plus, well, whatever, like minus x minus y. When you derive it, the highest power term is still positive. So you have a positive linear. Okay, that's the dx graph. But actually, it's not good. I, I shouldn't tell you this shortcut. This shortcut. It only works for polynomials. It's not going to work for other graphs. You don't know what's other graph. You know this is a polynomial, so you know what the derivative looks like. But you really need to understand how we decide where the gradient should be. So if we don't sketch it first, we have the turning point here. It seems like we cut the graph into half. Okay, we cut the graph into half. So let's look at the right hand side. The right hand side is a increasing function, right? It's an increasing function. So we will have positive gradient, is that right? So the graph needs to be above the axis, above the axis. On the left hand side is a decreasing graph, right? So decreasing graph will have negative gradient. So you have graph below the x-axis. So overall, you know that the graph must be like this. Okay, overall, you know the graph must be like this. That's that's actually should be the way how you look at the derivative because you can have for example a graph you don't know the formula okay you don't know the formula you don't know what kind of function is that 
then how you decide it you need to decide that by look at okay i will just make it into the sections like by the turning point or point of inflection and then i decide whether the graph should be above the x-axis or below the x-axis and then sketch the derivative that should be the way how we do it um that's the third one let's look at the next one well let's do it by the correct way um well it's a cubic graph i know it's a cubic graph but i know i'll have turning point here and i know i'll have turning point here i know i have turning point at those two places okay then we cut that into sessions well, like this so for the right hand side one is an increasing graph so you should have positive in between the two lines you have decreasing graph so you have negative on the left hand side it's still increasing graph you should have positive well positive negative positive the graph can only look like this too ugly okay that's better well, still not good well anyway that should be a positive quadratic it should be a positive quadratic okay for this one that's a cubic graph as well but i have stationary point of inflection here yeah i have stationary point of inflection here so at that point you still have derivative graph one zero okay one zero at that point then if you cut that into the middle you have positive increasing increasing so you have both increasing graph you have positive and positive so you know that will become a quadratic well maybe it should be a little bit thinner well i don't really know so i can sketch any quadratic that's what i mean when you have a stationary point in section you will have a turning point at that x value touch the x-axis can you see we have the x like intercept touch the x-axis as a turning point so that's the derivative graph all right for this one there is a stationary point of inflection at one so we'll have that point and then we'll have negative one as another x in the set we'll have those two points and you know this point should become a turning point remember like that's a stationary point of inflection also if you cut that into this session if you cut it that way okay positive here positive here and negative here okay positive positive and negative because it's decreasing on the left hand side so the graph looks like or oh, positive is here it needs to turn still put oh, it needs to turn here and then go back to this point it should be a graph looks like this it's a cubic graph but turning point is there uh how i can make it beautiful <laughs> too ugly well okay that's better okay still a cubic graph x intercept here turning point here and it turns somewhere i don't know where it turns uh, uh for the positive but it will turn somewhere Turning point at one zero and x intercept at negative one zero. Well, this these graphs are easy. Okay, these graphs are easy because you can see that's polynomial. Okay, you can see that's polynomial one thing i want to mention is when you have graph got horizontal asymptotes let's get a graph like this
Y equals to 2, that's the asymptotes. So I have and that's a station. Uh, I guess, uh, like this. This is a stationary point of deflection at zero four, okay? And that's a turning point at negative two, uh, five, six, seven, seven point five. And that's a horizontal asymptote. Okay, let's think about the derivative for this graph. Okay, let's think about the derivative. For, uh, I only have half of the asymptote. Okay? It's an familiar graph. I don't know what's the graph like equation. Yes? question oh oh uh, no okay so well again we think about the turning point where do you think the turning point will be x equals two two a negative two and and zero stationary point of infection here so zero okay and this point will become a turning point, right? It's because it's stationary point of infection, that point becomes turning point. Okay, and then let's have a think. From negative 2 to infinity is all decreasing function, is that true? It's like whole decreasing function. So what I will do is decreasing. So it's below the x-axis. And also you can see on the positive infinity side positive infinity side the gradient will become really negative is that true like it's more and more negative on that side so you will have like more and more negative and turn well, why my graph is so weird today it's negative you will turn back to that graph again okay I'll turn back to that graph again uh, let's make that a little bit better. Uh, okay, like this. That's what we have at the moment. But you need to think about this bit. Okay, this is very tricky. This is very tricky. We have the horizontal as possible. On this side, on this side, what's the derivative will be? Well, on the negative side, what's the derivative will close to? Zero, right? And is that positive or negative from negative infinity to two? Positive as well. Have a think about the shape, what the shape will look like. To the end, you will have gradient equals to zero. And it's still positive. How we can sketch the graph? Okay. We will have we know we'll have asymptotes here. Because you will approach to zero in the end. Okay, we'll approach to zero in the end. But it's positive as well. So I must go up. Okay, this graph must go up. I can't turn back. So it go up. But it will turn somewhere to meet the gradient equals to zero. I don't know where it actually turns, but it will turn somewhere. Because at this point, the derivative is actually approaching to zero, right? I must have my tail sketching approaching to zero, right? It can't go up forever. Okay, this graph is not, you can't go that way. Okay, it's not right because the derivative in the tail must be approaching to zero. And also I need positive. So it needs to go up and then going down somewhere. It's like, there's something called point of inflection. If you learn that, there's not stationary point of inflection, but there's point of inflection. It will change somewhere. It's change. It's increasing first, but will decrease in some point. Okay, so those point is actually increase, increasing, but then it's like like decline, like to approach to zero. That's the only way we can sketch graph. It's not going to be an exact shape. Okay, it's not going to be an exact shape, but that but. That will be the approximate shape, what you need to turn. You can turn somewhere else, okay? You can turn at the lower point, but you must turn somewhere to meet, like, derivative equals to zero. Okay, to meet derivative approximately equals to zero at the, like, negative infinity point. 
Does that make sense? That's the, that's the difference between a polynomial graph and the graph with horizontal asymptotes. We have horizontal asymptotes. The derivative will approach into zero in the end. Okay, we'll approach into zero in the end. So that's what we need to do. Uh, if you have a vertical asymptotes, if you have a vertical asymptotes, what the derivative graph have, what the what what that will become on the derivative graph. Say uh, one of x, you have a vertical asymptotes. What's the derivative will look like at that vertical asymptotes point? Now let's sketch a let's sketch one of x. Okay, that's. Well, that's the 1 over x graph. fx equals to 1 over x. Uh, let's think about the derivative. Well, you can derive it. What's the derivative will be? Negative 1 over x squared. x square of negative 1, right? Derive it, negative x, negative 2. So 1 over x, negative 1 over x squared. Well, you will still have vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes because they both decrease in graph. Okay, that's your derivative graph looks like. So the vertical asymptotes will still exist for the derivative graph. Why it exists? Because we can't take that x value. You still have it. Okay, you still have it. So it's still there. It's a vertical asymptote. Okay, so that's the two hard question. Well, polynomial, we can always sketch it. But when you, there will be some multiple choice question in the exam. Give you an unfamiliar graph and ask you which one of the following is the derivative function. So you need to know how to do that. Okay, you need to know how to do that. Horizontal asymptotes, which means the derivative must be approximate, uh, approaching to zero in the end. Okay. Any questions? No? Okay, if we don't have any questions, let's move to the next page. Well, that's how we sketch the uh, derivative graphs. And let's have a look at the next page. Well, next page is not hard. Example two, find the coordinates of the positions on the curve with equation y equals to x squared minus seven x plus eight, at which the tangent line makes an angle 45 degrees with the positive direction of x-axis. 45 degrees with the positive direction of x-axis, what that tells you? What's the 45 tells you? Gradient, gradient equals to what? one so gradient equals to tangent 45 degrees and that equals to one okay the tangent got a gradient of one so which is dy dx equals to one right dy dx equals to one so dy dx equals to 2x minus 7 and that equals to one x equals to 4 but look at that's the coordinates okay you need to find a y value as well so y equals to 16 minus 28 plus 8 minus 4 so the point is 4 minus 4 B. B says the tangent line is parallel to the y equals to negative 2x plus 6. Well, even easier, it gives you the tangent gradient already, which is negative 2. Okay, which is negative 2. Because it's parallel to that line, the gradient must be the same as that line. Then dy dx is negative 2. So 2x minus 7 equals to minus 2. 2x equals to 5. 
x equals to 5 over 2. So y equals to 25 over 4 minus 35 over 2 plus 8. Uh, 25 over 4 minus 70 over 4 plus 32 over 4. And we can add them. So we add that first 7, 57. 57 minus 70, y equals to negative 13 over 4. So the coordinates, coordinates is 5 over 2, comma, negative 13 over 4. Have a look at example three. Have a look at example three. Okay, the planning pass is given by this equation. Okay, we have the planning pass for y equals to a quarter x to the power four plus two over three x cubed. Well, let's think about if we're trying to sketch for this graph. Okay, we're trying to sketch for this graph y equals to, well I can take 1 on 12 as the common factor and x to the power of 3 that's 3x plus 8 I think it's that so x well if we sketch a full graph of that okay if I sketch a full graph of that Zero, 0 will be the x-intercept and negative 8 over 3 is the x-intercept as well. Well, do not worry about the domain yet. I want to sketch the full graph. And this point, because you have x cubed, that's three, three solutions at 0, right? That will become a what? Stationary point of inflection. Cool. So it's a positive graph, okay, it's a positive graph. That's the shape of this graph, okay. A little bit revised on polynomials, but you know we don't have the um, negative part, we don't have the negative graph. So the only part of the graph we have is, well, I will make... We don't have those graphs, but we have here. Okay, the only part of the graph we have is here. So the full function should look like that, but the path is like, uh, like a quadratic, okay, like a quadratic on the right hand side. So the question asks us, the units are kilometers, find the direction of motion. Okay, so what is direction of motion? So how do we find the direction of motion? Let's think about something is fly that way, like it's flying that way. So the direction is changed every single second, right? Well, all the time. It's not every single second even. It's changing all the time because it's a curve. All the direction phase is different like at any time you look at it. So the motion of direction is actually the tangent motion. So at that instant, the motion direction is actually the tangent at that point. Okay, it's the tangent at that point. For example, if you think about the direction of motion of that point, it will be the tangent. So it's at that point, the thing is fly this way. It's fly this way. 
and then at this point, the thing is flying this way. So the direction of motion is actually the tangent of that point. Okay, it's the tangent of that point. So when the x value is two, when the x value is two, which is here, so the tangent is like this. Okay, the tangent is like this. So that's the flying direction. Okay, that's the flying direction. So that's how, like, which way it face and then fly. So what I want to know is that how I can describe the flying um, direction of motion. I will talk that in the angle. Okay, the angle make with the horizontal line. That's how we discuss it. That's how we discuss that. So I'll turn on my left. Um, Yes. And then you know the gradient for this line. I can go for dy dx equals to x cubed plus 2x squared. Okay, that's my dy dx. So my dy dx when x equals to 2. My dy dx equals to 8 plus 8. That equals to 16. So the m equals to 16 at this point two. Okay, two something. I don't worry about what's what's the y value. I don't need the y value. I need the gradient. So the gradient is 16, which is quite large. Okay, it's quite vertical already. So if you want to talk about this angle here, you know the tangent theta will equal to 16, right? The tangent theta will equal to 16. So what we need to know to find the theta is tangent inverse. Thing. Well, what it gives you is in the radius form because I put that, see the top is the radius form. So I will times that by 180 over pi. Um, so equal, that give me the angle. Okay, let's say we take one decimal places is 86.4 degree. It should be more explicit how many decimals they want and what it's asking. But I will just tell you I want one decimal places. That's 86.4 degrees. So it flies in the direction of 86.4 degrees make with the horizontal, positive horizontal um, axis. Okay, make with the horizontal, so which Make angle of 86.4 degrees with the horizontal. So that's the direction how it flies. Okay, how it flies. That's the A1. Well, A2 is the same. When x equals to 3, dy dx, well, it's even large, okay? That equals to. Uh, dy dx equals to 27 plus 2 times 9, which is 18. So that's a 45. So tangent theta equals to 45. That's the gradient. So that's the gradient m. So theta equals to tangent 45. So enter times with that equals to 88.7 degrees. 88.7 yeah, degrees. So make a 88.7 degree with the horizontal. Okay, make angle of 88.7 degrees with the horizontal. And B says, find a point on the flying saucer's path where the path is inclined 45 degrees to the horizontal. So 45 degrees on the horizontal, which means tangent 45 degrees give you one. And that is the gradient. Okay, that is the gradient. So dy dx equals to one. And that is x cubed plus 2x squared plus, mm, equals to 1. Okay, x cubed plus 2x squared equals to 1. x 
cube plus 2x squared equals to 1, comma x. Okay, the answer is negative 1.6, negative 1, or at 0 0.6. But we'll take the 0 0.6 one because x is greater than 0. So we take the exact value, root 5 minus 1 over 2. Okay, root 5 minus 1 over 2. That's the value we'll take. And we can find the y value after that. Okay, we can find y by substitute that in. And for C, just finish up the last part. Are there any other points on the path? We'll give you the situation described in B. Basically, no, because we solve it. The other two points with the same gradient is on the negative side. So on the positive side, that's the only value we solved out. Okay, that's the only value we solved out. So no, like basically in this path, no. We don't have any other point. Okay, that's the end of this exercise.